and Israel continues to root out the Hamas terrorists who savage innocent civilians on October 7th. The political left here in America appears to be engaged in a loud public debate with itself over how exactly to differentiate indiscriminate slaughter and lawful self-defense. Last week, an especially radical House Democrats repeated to her followers a call to eliminate the Jewish state from the river to the sea. Then she attempted to explain away the undeniability genocidal connotation of this long-standing anti-Israel slogan as, quote, peaceful coexistence. Apparently, Jews can live in peace with Palestinians as long as they vacate Israel. Unfortunately, the shameful moral equivalence that has been creeping across elite and influential corners of the left has now been embraced by a former commander in chief. Just a few days ago, President Obama used the same breath to express his horror at both Hamas violence and a supposed Israel occupation of Gaza. In reality, the only force that has occupied Gaza since 2007 is Hamas, not Israel. The former president also said, quote, all of us are complicit to some degree. That's simply false. Responsibility lies with the terrorists. So, Madam President, perhaps President Obama has forgotten the bloody campaign to defeat ISIS, over which he presided, or the destruction of cities like Mosul and Raqqa in pursuit of medieval Islamic tyrants who terrorized innocent civilians. I don't recall President Obama doubting the righteousness of American efforts to support local partners in rooting out terrorists in Iraq and Syria. Where is that moral clarity in the face of Hamas? Unfortunately, that brings me to the growing number of U.S. of our Senate colleagues who called for a ceasefire in today's terrorist war. I would remind our colleagues that Israel had negotiated a ceasefire with Hamas over the summer. And we all saw where that led on October 7th. Return to any such arrangement right now would be amnesty for the butchers, the butchers of innocent Israelis and Gazans alike. Once again, let's remember who the aggressor is. Hamas is blocking citizens from leaving Gaza City. Hamas has intentionally put its weapons caches inside schools, hospitals, and mosques, and is firing positions in the middle of civilian populations. Hamas has poured countless billions of dollars in humanitarian assistance into its terror tunnels. These people are not freedom fighters. They do not want peaceful coexistence. They're savages, savages, cut from the same cloth as the ISIS and Al-Qaeda. There's no room for moral equivalency. The distinction between good and evil here is blindingly obvious. Fortunately, some do recognize this. The Vice Chancellor of Germany, a member of his country's Green Party, didn't have any trouble finding the moral clarity this moment requires. In an address to the nation last week, he said, Hamas does not want reconciliation with Israel, but the extermination of Israel 
And this is why it is pivotal to make it clear that Israel's right to exist must not be relativized. Israel's security is our obligation, end quote. American politicians who cannot bring themselves to acknowledge the same should really be ashamed of themselves. This weekend marked 44 years since Iranian revolutionaries overran the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, in Tehran and took 66 Americans hostage. Today, Americans are once again held hostage by forces aligned with Iranian tyranny. Many more Israelis are held alongside them, and Israel deserves the time, space, and support it needs to bring these terrorist captors to justice. In the days immediately following October 7th, I warned that President Biden would be pressured to withhold the support and that familiar and morally bankrupt calls for ceasefire would threaten Israel's ability to see its defensive operations through. And so here we are, nearly a month later, watching the movement to grant Hamas amnesty reach the highest levels of our government. War is a bloody business. That is the reality Israel faces. We should be careful before second-guessing their efforts to get innocent Israelis and Americans home safely and to destroy Hamas' ability to wage war. Now, on another matter, while the United States and our allies face terrorist and authoritarian violence abroad, the American people continue to face waves of unchecked violence here at home. Just last month, a member of, of our colleague, Senator Britt's staff, was robbed at gunpoint right outside her apartment building. Thankfully, this young woman was not injured, but stories like hers have become all too common in our nation's capital. According to Washington Metropolitan Police, robbery in the city has increased by 70% this year, 70%. Motor vehicle theft is up 101%. And in the midst of rising violent crime, a particularly alarming spate of anti-Semitic violence has come to a head in the wake of October 7th. In New York City, authorities have recorded 66 anti-Semitic hate crimes in just the last month. On October 14th, exactly one week after Hamas deadly attack. A 29-year-old woman was beaten on the subway in Manhattan. The attacker reportedly told the victim that the reason for his attack was because, quote, you are Jewish. A Jewish deli in the city was vandalized with multiple images of swastika symbols. And of course, murderous threats against Jewish students at Cornell have prompted an FBI investigation. In just the first two weeks after October 7th, the rate of anti-Semitic violence against American Jews nearly quadrupled. The American left has gone out of its way to downplay the threats they face with everything from both sides statements to outright incitement. All Americans deserve to feel safe in their homes and in their communities. It's long past time for Democrats to take the historic waves of violence in America seriously.